Uh, I got one more comedian for you guys. He is your closer, your headliner of the evening. Are you ready for your headliner? Yeah. Hell yeah. He is the producer of comedy in Kitsap. He is also the host of the podcast show. Make some noise for Joseph Rogers. What's up, Salem? You guys having a good time tonight? Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm not, because I'm sober. <laughs> My least favorite part of this show, because I love getting high and doing comedy, so this is going to be a struggle. <laughs> uh, I know what you guys are thinking. This guy looks like Jesus if his dad didn't care about him. <laughs> My friend told me recently, they said, you look like you tried out for ISIS but failed the drug test. <laughs> Pretty obvious, I guess. The one thing I get that I don't understand is people tell me all the time I look like fat Russell Crowe. Yeah, I really, I don't see it either, right? It just doesn't make any sense. Oh, you do see it? Oh, yeah. Everyone in the back's like, I see it. I'm like, oh, fuck it. Shit, I knew I was fat. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if you guys heard, but with the most recent school shootings, that now makes school shootings the number two school-related deaths in our country. Don't worry, though, student loans is still number one. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck your arts degree. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I did, um, you know, I know what I really look like, though. I look like someone that does not have car insurance. <laughs> right? You get hit by someone that looks like me, you're like, fuck, they don't have car insurance. <laughs> it's true, I've had car insurance for 10 years now. Yeah, I don't know why I expected a round of applause for that, but I'm proud. Thank you very much. You know what it's like. Struggles are real. Don't act like some of you aren't writing dirty in here right now, okay? That's like the first bill that goes when you're broke. Car insurance bill. Get that fucking shit out of here, right? Here's what I learned about not having car insurance for 10 years. It makes you a way better driver. Yeah. You stop at all the yellow lights, you never go more than five over, and you definitely won't be tailgating a Tesla anytime soon. Because when I get too close to a Tesla, my first thought is, I do not want to know how many dicks I gotta suck to pay for that bumper. And I'm straight, and I have that thought. I'm 100%, well, 99% straight. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Because, you know, honestly, just thinking about it, I might suck a dick one day. You know, I might do it. My thing is, it's just got to be more successful than me. Right? I can't suck down. That doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> it's got to be the right dick. <laughs> is that what women struggle with every day? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, listen to them. They're like, yeah, that's the daily struggle right there. Can't suck down. <laughs> uh, but uh, this is, <laughs> I'm tired. Like, I just celebrated my six year anniversary, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Of being unemployed. Yeah. You guys are way more supportive than my parents. Anybody looking for a roommate? <sighs> Damn, where'd all that support go? Yeah. Here's the thing about being broke, though, man. I hate it. It changes you, right? I got way too embarrassed the other day. I went to a friend's house. I got way too excited they had full square paper towels. <laughs> I grabbed one, and I was like, oh, damn, baller. I still ripped that shit in half, though, because I'm broke, you know? <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys have seen this thing rich people do. I was at a gas station the other day, and I saw somebody fill up their entire tank at once. You guys see that flex? That's crazy, bro. I'm like, I want to know what that's like. Shit. This is how I know I'm more broke than anybody here. Do you guys remember what it was like to float a check? Yeah, some of my broke folks out there, yeah. Some of the younger crowds like, what are checks? <laughs> Back in the day when there was checkbooks, you could float a check or also known as kite a check, right? And what that means is you can write a check on a Friday evening and then you had about till Tuesday to get the money back in your account before the check cleared, right? Float a check. Yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. This is how I know I'm more broke than anybody here. One time, I floated myself a check. Yeah. I wrote a check for $200 in my own name, deposited it in the ATM on a Friday night. Yeah. Yeah, then took out that $200. Yeah, you know. 
Here's the thing, though. You can't be all willy-nilly with that $200 because it's going to come back Tuesday and hit your account. You can't get blowing hookers like you want to, right? <laughs> so you know what I'd do with that $200? Smoke it. No, you can't do that either. You can't... <laughs> No, this is what, yeah, I flipped that shit. I bought an ounce of weed, sold that shit over the weekend, turned it into 240 bucks, put the 200 bucks back in my account. Bitch, I just made 40 bucks writing myself a check. Yeah, what do you know about that, Salem? Yeah, probably nothing, because you're like, that's fiscally irresponsible as hell. <laughs> yeah, man, you gotta do what you gotta do, shit. Yeah. Yeah, you get to smoke some of it if you sell it all first, right? Because if you end up smoking half of it, then you got to start, you know, fucking doing your own OnlyFans to get the money, you know? <laughs> fucking, and I, you know, people ask me all the time, like, Joe, you're decent looking, you're broke, why don't you get an OnlyFans? Because I've seen people talk shit about the size of what I have going on down there. So I'm not going to present it online. I don't want people talking shit like that to me, you know? Because here's the thing, man, I'm, I'm not like, I don't know if I'm big or small or whatever, but this one time I was getting kinky with this girl, and I went to go smack her in the face with my dick, and I missed. <laughs> yeah. And she didn't notice, so I was like, oh, I get another chance, and I missed again! <laughs> so there I am, two balls, two strikes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm not trying to strike out with this girl, you know what I'm saying? And then there was this one time where I was dating this girl and she's like, Joe, one of these nights, I want you to wake me up with sex. I was like, that sounds awesome. I could do that, right? So one night I did it. I started to wake her up with sex, started having sex with her when she was asleep. 20 minutes later, she was still asleep. <laughs> yeah, and then a thing of sweat dripped off me and landed on her and that woke her up. I'm like, what? <laughs> that woke you up? She's like, oh, babe, you did it. You woke me up with sex. Let's go. I was like, let's go. I came 10 minutes ago. <laughs> what are you talking about? Shit. She's like, oh, yeah, you did. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's so bad. That's so bad. I'm sorry. No, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, like, uh, actually, the funny thing is, is that uh, I do have a girlfriend now. We're in a mostly monogamous relationship. Yeah, mostly. By that, I mean sometimes she gets drunk and makes out with chicks in the bathroom. Yeah. She's at home where she should be. Yeah. I can't take her out in public. She starts making out with chicks, right? I tried to make her jealous one night. I was making out with a bunch of dudes in the bathroom, but she didn't care. And hence, 99% straight. Can't make her jealous. It's crazy. But, uh, no, we actually have been together for 18 years now, and uh, that's an accomplishment, right? Yeah, thank you very much. Some of you out there know what that's like. It takes work, it takes commitment, it takes trust, it takes dedication, it takes loyalty, right? Uh, the most important factor is communication. You should always be open and communicate with each other. Um, like, for example, she does communicate to me in subtle ways. Like, for example, when she starts her cycle, she writes a little black dot on the calendar to mark it so she can track her health, you know, make sure everything's on point. Um, this is also a great time for us guys to know when not to say things like calm down <laughs> or relax, right? One time I didn't notice the black dot on the calendar. I came home, I was like, calm down, bro. Oh my God. I thought she was going to shank me. I was like, she's like, don't you ever fucking call me bro again. I was like, oh shit, okay, sorry, Britch. <laughs> yeah. She didn't like that either. So I was like, okay, sorry, Brunt. Yeah, she didn't like that either. She goes, you know what, Joe? I wish that just for a couple weeks you can have a vagina so you know what it's like to be a woman. I was like, that sounds fucking awesome, right? I would love that. She goes, oh yeah, Joe, what would you do if you had a vagina for a couple weeks? I was like, well, the first thing I do is I go make some money, right? Because I'm broke. And for those of you that didn't laugh at that, don't judge me. This is 2024. We're supposed to be sex positive. You think if I have a pussy, I'm not going to go make some money? Come on now, shit. And I turned it around on her. I was like, oh yeah, babe, I bet you couldn't even handle having a dick for a couple weeks. What would you do if you had that? She goes, I'd probably go make more money than you. I was like, what? <laughs> How do you think you're going to do that? She's like, well, technically speaking, men have been making 25% more than women since 1970. 
I was like, get that shit out of here. Good luck doing that with my dick. <laughs> 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 And I was like, no, seriously, babe, what would you do if you had a dick for a couple weeks? She looks at me straight in my eyes and she goes, I just want to know what it feels like to come every time. And I was like, oh, <laughs> damn. And she's right, right? Because us guys, we don't deserve that luxury. We don't. You know, we don't deserve that at all. And this is how I know there's no God, right? Because if there was a God, uh, come what tastes like chocolate and anal will cure menstrual cramps. Okay, that's... <laughs> That's how I know there's no God. All right, guys, I can't wait to get stoned and come back. It's going to be so much fun. Love you. Joseph Rogers, everybody, let him hear it.